Imagine standing in front of a rugged boulder streaked with veins of mineralized rock. Buried inside this lifeless stone is the most coveted metal on Earth, gold. For centuries, prospectors and empires alike believed the only way to separate this treasure was through harsh chemicals, mercury, or cyanide. But what if I told you there's a way nature itself reveals gold? A way older than modern science, fueled not by acids but by fire, the very element that shapes civilizations. This isn't myth or alchemy. This is a raw, factual process that has been quietly preserved through history, a method that even today can unlock gold from stone without touching a drop of poison. The secret is in how fire reshapes rock, how heat transforms its very structure, and how cooling fractures expose the hidden veins. And once you understand this process, every glowing ember becomes a key to treasure. Before we reach the moment of golden revelation, you need to grasp the science of fire itself. Rock is not lifeless. It is a combination of minerals fused over millions of years under pressure and heat. When you expose quartz-bearing or sulfide-rich rock to controlled flames, its molecules expand. The stress fractures caused by extreme heat are not random. They follow weaknesses already written into the rock by geological history, fault lines, veins, and mineral borders. This is where gold hides, and this is where fire becomes your ally. While acid dissolves, fire breaks apart. It cracks, it splits, it opens doors inside stone that have been sealed for millennia. The process begins with selection. Not all rocks respond the same way to heat. The seasoned prospector knows to target quartz veins stained with iron, rocks with rusty orange streaks, or pieces carrying heavy sulfides. These are signals of gold's presence. Once collected, the rock must be reduced to manageable size. Large boulders are not only difficult to heat evenly, they also conceal their secrets too deeply. By striking them with a hammer, the rock is broken into fist-sized chunks, each one ready for fire's trial. This is not destruction, it is preparation. The smaller the piece, the more easily fire can penetrate its structure. Now comes the fire itself. Historically, ancient miners used open pit fires, feeding them with charcoal until the flames reached temperatures high enough to make stone sing. Today, even with simple tools, you can replicate the same process. Building a fire pit lined with stone and fed with hardwood or charcoal creates a steady bed of coals. Rock placed upon these coals doesn't simply heat, it undergoes stress. As the temperature rises, the minerals expand unevenly. Quartz swells faster than gold, faster than iron oxides. This imbalance creates microscopic fractures that soon stretch into cracks large enough to see. Fire in this way becomes a wedge far sharper than steel. The secret lies not only in the heating, but in the cycle of fire and cooling. Ancient blacksmiths knew this as tempering. Expose rock to fire, then shock it with water and the sudden contraction causes explosive fracturing. The sound is startling, the hiss of steam, the crack of stone splitting apart, nature's own alchemy unfolding before your eyes. Within these broken pieces, flashes of yellow sometimes gleam, the unmistakable glint of liberated gold. More often, however, the gold remains lodged inside but closer to the surface, its host mineral crumbled and weakened, ready to be separated. At this point, every fragment tells a story. Some will show exposed veins, thin threads of metal now accessible. Others may reveal stained pockets, where further crushing will reveal what fire has already begun. The important part is patience. Fire alone rarely frees entire nuggets in one attempt. Instead, it softens the rock's grip, loosening its hold until the final blows release the prize. What you witness is not magic, but science repeating what Earth itself once did deep underground. Pressure, heat, and cooling reshaping minerals until gold found space to collect. The process doesn't end with one cycle. Fire, water, crushing, and repeating. The rhythm of natural gold extraction. Each round brings the rock closer to surrender. Each crack is an opening. Each hiss of steam a sign that you are one step nearer to seeing yellow. 
And all this unfolds without a single drop of mercury or cyanide, without the poison that scarred rivers and ruined countless lives. Instead, it is fire, the element of rebirth, reclaiming gold with nothing but heat and patience. But what happens next, after the cracks, after the steaming shock, after the golden veins begin to surface, is the part prospectors guard most closely. Because if fire is the key, the next steps are the lock that must be turned carefully. And it is here, in the second half of this journey, that we reveal how to take fractured rock, sift its remnants, and finally hold in your palm a piece of pure, natural gold. Fire has always been more than a tool. It is the ultimate judge, the force that strips away weakness and reveals what endures. When gold is brought before the flames, something remarkable happens. While other metals corrode, tarnish, or vanish into ash, gold holds its form, silver darkens, copper burns black, iron breaks apart into red dust. But gold, gold glows brighter, untouched by destruction. This resilience has been known for centuries. Ancient civilizations did not need modern laboratories or harsh chemicals to prove authenticity. They relied on fire. In the early world, prospectors placed crushed ore into bone ash cups and let the flames decide. Impurities were drawn away, swallowed into the ash, until what remained was undeniable. Small, shining beads of metal that no flame could consume. Pure gold. Even without sophisticated furnaces, even with nothing but campfire heat, nature obeyed the same rule. Rocks weakened under stress, cracking open and exposing veins of gold that had been locked inside for millennia. Fire was never just destruction, it was revelation. And that revelation carried meaning. Gold's permanence in the face of fire became a symbol of eternity, of unbreakable value. A coin melted and reforged countless times is still gold. A nugget unearthed after eons of pressure is still gold. Fire cannot erase it. Fire only unmasks it. That is why across time and culture, fire has been seen as the sacred test of wealth, the trial that proves what is real and what is false. Today, in an age where industries chase efficiency with chemicals that scar the earth, the old wisdom feels more relevant than ever. Scientists are exploring plasma torches and clean burning furnaces to rediscover what ancient people already knew. Fire alone can separate truth from illusion. Fire alone can uncover gold in its purest form. The lesson remains unchanged. If you wish to know what survives, place it in the fire. Gold endures, always. And that endurance is why gold has been trusted as wealth longer than any currency longer than any empire. When flames consume everything else, when time erodes stone and rust devours iron, the gold remains. Fire may roar, but it cannot win. It only reveals. So the next time you hold a nugget in your hand, remember that it is more than a fragment of the earth. It is proof that somewhere in its story, fire has already tested it and it has triumphed. Because fire does not destroy gold, fire crowns it. Fire declares its eternal strength. This is EGS Pro, your guide to the hidden truths of gold, gemstones, and the forces of nature that reveal them. Stay curious, stay searching, and remember, the earth still holds its secrets.